Todd's Cabaret Collection continues. These are all coming, folks. Worth the wait, but you know what? We have some real rarities for you. Look what we have here. Four more, the only four Williams Cabarets made that we know of. Take a look at these beauties and how they have come up. Isn't it something? You know what's better is that you're going to see what they look like with the lights off. You'll see how dramatic they look. Terry is filming, by the way. Here, watch. Now our black lights. Isn't this nice? There's actually lighting on the monitor panel here, see? This one did not have it. This one didn't. But the Robotron did. And plus, the start buttons were also lit. Isn't that sharp? Now, we've done a few extra things to these, so we're going to start. Let me turn the regular lights back on. Oh, by the way, people had asked up here. The fluorescent fixtures up here have four tubes in them. Two white for work lights and two black lights. We have separate switches. And then the diffusers there are designed so that you can't tell they're on. Terry, turn the camera around. To see, look, if you look at the fluorescent light fixtures, it doesn't look like anything is on. Now, even when I turn the regular lights on, it's hard to see. Isn't that sharp? So you can wire your game room up the same way, and you can get this beautiful kind of rug that glows in black light, too. Let's start with bubbles. Oh, a quick history. 81 and 82 is when these machines were made. As far as we can determine, the production run was perhaps 500 for all these cabarets, possibly bubbles having the least made. We're not sure though. There are no numbers available, nothing. I can tell you this, which is really interesting. At the distributor where I used to buy my new games, they still had a, uh, two Stargates and two Make Tracks left. They were new, but they were out of the box. And back in 1984, 85, no, actually 83, because it was before we started selling them from my home. My partner and I bought them for 500 bucks each. So for 2,000 bucks, we got two Stargates and two Make Tracks, and we put them out in location where we made nothing. They weren't making any money. Even at $500, they made very little. None of these are my original units. Yes. But look, let's start with Bubbles. I, this is one of the first games I acquired when I started decided to start collecting games. So this would have been probably in 86. 96, 96. Now Bubbles had originally black tea molding. Actually, all of these did. But we have cleverly custom matched the colors for each of the machines. This also had something called an optical joystick. The second game of the same era Sinistar came out the same time, also had the optical tr uh, the joystick. I'm going to show you how that operates in a minute. And it's interesting to note, when we went to the distributors, they were actually selling both Bubbles and Sinistar as a package. They used to have these mobiles hanging up in the distributor. And Bubbles was turning and Sinistar was turning with the wind to try to sell them. They did not sell well. I even saw some trash can models of bubbles. They look like trash cans. As a matter of fact, we have a neat video, Terry. Look right up here. This is the video we made of a bubbles that Jennifer May bought from us, Jen May, and she is going to turn it back into a bubbles. Some clod hopper converted it. But you might enjoy that video. This is that solid state joystick. This is a brand new rubber we put on it. You can see it's very quiet, very silent, and it's optical. Solid state, see how it moves and glides in and out of the optics. The same optics that Williams used on their pinball machines. Very nice. Also, I wanted you to note how nice this is. See how they lit up the instructions. Now, I will point this out. The instructions here and here, up top, the, uh, the marquee are lit with LEDs, super bright ones, because the original 44s were so dim Oh my gosh, they were dim. 
And I remember they'll never burn out because they were so dim. We also put LEDs here in the coin slot. This machine was in pretty nice shape. And uh, it's all ready to go for our new customer. Look how beautiful the 13 inch screen looks. Super sharp picture because of that small television. Come back here, Terry. You have to squeeze by to come over here because we're opening the door. Terry was kind of cold on at the last minute to do this. I'm very happy she is. Do you notice here? See the setup here? These are tower LEDs that we get from Lights Out Pimble. We love these. These are the super bright ones. Really nice. Inside, there's the standard logic board that Williams used. As a matter of fact, I have a handy. Carry on prepared a fluorescent light to offer some extra lighting. Frank has put on his battery board. See, and that ensures a good five years of use. Over here, brand new connector. That we use the Triuricon connectors on all Williams games and, new, and all the pins inside. It grips the pins on three ways. This board will probably never fail for the lifetime these people own it. And right down here, Terry, can you get down lower and show? This is the switch line board that runs the optics. See right there? So it's a you little bit different. Out of the lift way. Lift that little tab. Lift the tab. Awesome. Look at that. Awesome. Yes. And there's the ROM board. Uh, Williams used to say you could switch games out, but your controls wouldn't match up. So it would make no sense. Look. See, we got rid of the goofy power supply that was in there, and we've put in a computer power supply. And the fuse that you see attached to it runs the light bulbs in case there's a dead short. Our soundboard has new caps. Our monitor here, little 13 inch 4600 has all new caps too. Isn't that nice? Nice and neat. I love this game because of the door. Now look, see the hook here? We put these hooks on all of our games because, and you see how we have them open, bladed, so you don't need anything. <laughs> what I need to do is to get it free, Terry. It's stuck. Oh. I, you know, what happened to the script supervisor? And the oh. person planning on this. Oh. Somebody. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, gosh, Terry, you know I don't like that. You okay there? Oh, my gosh. <laughs> I could help, but I have a video camera in my hand. That's more important. Yeah, look. I did all that to show that. Oh, my gosh, it's so beautiful. But see? It's wonderful. See, you, you just heap it open, then you can lift Very it useful. out. It's a very good idea. I think I had a good idea, Terry. Go around to the front of the Stargate. I'm going to hang this up, and we're not going to have foul ups like that ever again, Terry. Ever again. Stargate. Yellow team only. Does not look nice. Control panel. I'd left these unlocked so we could open them up. See how compact and nice it is. We have new metal blades in here for the uh, to recall. The joystick is different. The upright, there's a whole contraption, but on the cabaret and on the cocktail, they have this set up here. They got rid of that big junk, uh, big thing here, and it's interior now. See how small it is? So it is different. It's still a great joystick, but it's different, built differently. Now, Kurt mentioned these lights are a little dimmer the strip of 44s that was in there is set further back. That's why that is dimmer. Shall we go to the back? Again? Mm -hmm. da -da. There he is with his light. Yes, there's my light. We've done the same thing here. Here is the sink adjuster. They had to put, come up with this board. Some of the Stargates have that on there. It adjusts the sink on the screen. At this factory, by the way, uh, the battery board, of course, that is the standard switch line board. And, of course, your ROM board. It doesn't have optics, so it's different. So the only two games that use that optic, that special switchboard, is Bubbles and Sinistar. Soundboard new caps, new power supply, and a fuse block. 
So that is nice. Make tracks. Let's move on to make tracks, Terry. Make tracks. You know, make tracks was William's way of figuring out we got to compete with Pac-Man. The original company that released it, I can't even pronounce it, but Cruel or something. Here, here it is right there. There it is. Okay. They made Crush Roller. That was the original name of the game. And I have a Crush Roller. As a matter of fact, um, several people have bought them. I still have a couple new in the box. If any of you want a Crush Roller. Just like Make Tracks, but it has different names on it. The different copyright. So William said, we need to get a Pac-Man fast. And I mean fast, because Pac-Man was out. Miss Pac-Man was out. So they licensed Make Tracks. This uses a four-way standard four-way leaf switch joystick two start buttons um, there are no other push buttons they wanted to keep the maze thing just like the other game I didn't play the other games because everybody knows how to play bubbles and but what I, I always liked this game however it's hard unlike Pac-Man that was kind of slower and more lazier these fish that I'm running over once they escape the aquarium, they become very, very fast and very, very aggressive, and they're hard to outrun. So it's a hard game. I ran into that. Don't you like the green team holding on this? And look, they stuck it on the side. I didn't do that. That's how the factory came up with it. They put the sticker. They said, you know what? we got to figure out where to put the instruction card. Thump! Oh, I shouldn't say. Let's go back and look at the boards. It was actually me who did that. It was you. <laughs> okay, now, I will tell you, this was purchased brand new. Um, I got it new, but there was a little bit of cabinet damage to the paint. So we actually did a little repainting of the orange on one side. But you can see, when you look in the inside, it's gorgeous. We left it all untouched because everything looked perfect. The interlock switch we left in too. Normally we get it and see factory Williams board book. Book. An extra sticker. The manual. And look, most important, Terry, look the warranty. <laughs> Wonderful. Oh <laughs> it'll come back on now. What is this you see wrapped up? Well, this is a spare. Tested working 100% make tracks board that I tested and we're giving it to the customer. Look how nice everything looks. See? The original power supply, perfect. So we decided it was important since it was new that we would leave it just the way it is in its original perfect state. And you know, the power supply doesn't get a big draw because it only uses 5 and 12 volts. Here's the lo logic board with William's stickers on it. It is their own design. The other board called, uh, by Crush Roller will plug in just the same, okay? But it looks different. The layout is slightly different. But this is, in fact, a Williams logic board that they designed. They said, we licensed the game, but we're going to make our own board. Those boards are very, very durable. I will tell you, very durable. Uh, we have had a few failures, but very few. You know, turn, you know the interlock switch to turn that thing off. We are ready for our fourth and last game of the Williams Saga. And perhaps the most exciting of all, Eugene Jarvis's amazing Robotron. Amazing. 40 levels, but 265 screens or something, something like that. Uh, what he didn't do, do you know the programming in this? There is more memory in a greeting card, a musical greeting card, than in this game. Oh Unbelievable. Gosh. There is more programming. They packed every possible iota of information into the chips, and they came up with a stunning piece of electronic equipment that, in my opinion, is unmatched today by most games they come up with. There is nothing like Robotron, nothing. The two joysticks here we've rebuilt with brand new grommets. You can now buy new grommets from two different sources. 
Thank God we have those people. Where will we be without the rubber grommets? See, they pop right back up. You get a new grommet and a new spring. It's a great deal. Wonderful deal. I always like the fact that the buttons lit up. Isn't that nice? And of course, the instructions in the back lit up. Now they're lighting up nice. You're going to see why, of course, because we have those LEDs. But originally, when we had these in location, you could barely see the bulbs. You were like this. Are they on? And of course, our standard door on the inside here. We, we did put a new sticker here that was kind of kind of shot, but we changed it. This one here, the cabinet artwork is very nice. Steven reworked it. Um, they don't make a lot of parts for this. As a matter of fact, I don't think they make anything. So this is in pretty good shape, considering it probably got the most use out of all the games. And inside, same logic board setup, new connector, new battery board. All this down here has been done. Power supply is new, of course, and new caps. The usual wonderful things TNT does, and of course we have new caps in the television set. And look what came back. Yes, and I got a chance to put television set there too. I love doing that. I have to do that because it gives my videos um, just make some different than everybody else's. I don't know. Does that mean it, it makes it worse, Terry? Possibly. <laughs> Possibly. Wait, didn't you have something to share or tell us? A scary story, perhaps? Put underneath your chin. Oh. Harry, I'm too tired. Do? That's what's going on. Well, let me ask you a question. Carrie's in a show this week, by the way. Oh my next gosh. week. Yeah. She's got starring role in High School Musical. Listen, if you come, now of course, your, this video is up forever, but it's playing the end of July 2016. But if you're in Philadelphia, come to any of the three shows. I will take you out for dessert afterwards at the local diner. You know how much I like diners. Are you scaring away everyone, though? <gasps> No one wants to. Nobody wants to go out to diner with, with you. <sighs> well, we have more stuff to show you back at the shop. So we will be back here because this is the big week where all these games disappear. I just kicked the plug in the socket. By the way, uh, in your game room, this is a little piece of advice. Uh, we chiseled out, the basement here was completely unfinished when we bought the house. So we chiseled out the concrete floor and laid the Rome, uh, not Romex, but uh, BX wire. So the wire is inside a steel cable and then filled it in with concrete. And we put sockets, two, 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 so we could butt these up. So down the center we used to have tabletop games. It was really neat. It was nice. And they're all coming back. We're not giving up the game room. At least not yet. Terry? More games to come. More games are to come. And I think it's time we leave here. But we're going to pick up a TNT. Now. I'm losing them. Ah. And a lot more. There's going to be a lot more minis this week. But listen. I'd be crawling too if I gave them away at half price like you did. Oh. I'm broke. <laughs> listen. Bob Burke, Robert Burke, is having his show, his arcade game show, in just two weeks. It's in mid-August, and the third week of August, and it's going to be in Chicago. And he prepared this little video, and he talks about me. And now, a very special arcade message from Rob Burke. Todd, what do you do in there? All you do is work, work, work. You drive all your employees nuts. And you never think about me. And Todd, I need you here right now. Why? Because I need your help in promoting my show, Arcade Video Game Room Expo, coming up here the end of August in Chicago. And uh, it'll be full of games, full of famous celebrities like Walter Day, Billy Mitchell, Richie Knuckles, Joel West. And what else makes our show really cool is we're gonna have a tour of the Galloping Ghost Arcade 
And thanks to Doc Mac, we're gonna view over 500 working video machines. So that is gonna be a treat. So uh, that's gonna be great. Also at the show, we're gonna have between two to 300 video games up, running and working, many of them for sale. So Todd, perhaps you can leave your little hum humble abode and come visit us in Chicago. <laughs> <sighs> Alas, I'll be in Disney World. I really did want to go, but not, not this year. But I'll be there in spirit, and I'll follow along in Facebook and whatever posts are there. And uh, I do want to point out that Jeff made that video for Rob, and he actually did a private game room tour of Arcade Hollywood Channel. Okay, so find that channel, Arcade Hollywood, and see the private tour of Rob's game room. Hey Rob, you didn't give me a tour of the game room. Uh, so once again, there is the site to go to register for that wonderful show that's coming up, the first annual. Hopefully there'll be the second or third annual. Oh, I forgot. I'm gonna walk right by it. Our corporate sale. 17, 18 games going out. Here's another one. Beautiful Asteroids. This is an original unit from 1979. That we have redone. I mean, this wasn't the 2016 remake. It looks like new, doesn't it? It's beautiful. Look, this is chrome T molding. This is the uh, blue covering. T molding.com sells that. Beautiful. Reproduction uh, cardboard insert from arcade shops. That looks really nice. New control panel over the new buttons. Everything's been scrubbed, cleaned. It looks gorgeous. Vector television set's been rebuilt. With all new caps, we get a lot of the cap kits for these now from Zane and Electronics. They also have the transistors too. They fly back here, high voltage, has all new parts in it, including the Zener diodes and things that go bad. The only thing left to do on this is really vacuum it. On the bottom, new capacitor from Bob Roberts, and so are the capacitors on the AR1 power supply. You can buy them from them. Logic board, they took the board out, they cleaned all the EEPROM chips very carefully. Make sure they were nurtured for years of service. These are set up for coin up. This Gallagher you saw early, earlier just has a couple more things left to do. I know they had to put a couple bolts in the control panel, and this T molding is going to be changed. I think we'll put green on that, Frank. What do you think? Sure. Think green will look nice. New television inside, of course. Cabinet's been fixed, rebuilt. We put new leg levelers and everything we sell. We buy, we have bought thousands of leg levelers. Thousands of them. We still have to vacuum this too. This is one of the last things to do. But look at how gorgeous this is. This is Frank's own design. Everything mounted nice and neat. Wire ties, fused, labeled, clearly labeled. These are labels that Frank has made on all the connectors. Everything unplugs. None of this horses nonsense that I see. We get these machines in. It looks like a child actually sat in there and wired it. This is the cable to the light, fluorescent light in the speaker. You on off switch. See how nice and neat Frank has done this job. Coin dirt can even come off and unplug. You see we have LEDs lighting the coin slots and the coins are set back in there so it will hopefully make some money for this guy. Just this, we just have Gallagher turned on in this game. Frank, I'm exhausted. I know, sitting there talking. Do you realize we have a ton of cabarets to show you? Because they're all getting picked up in a week. How are we going to do this? Well, I guess we better start. Better start by me leaving now and filming some more. Good night. Good night.